at the April Conference of 1910, the First Presidency of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints consisted of President Joseph F. Smith, seen here in center, President Anthony H. Lund, first counselor to the left of the picture, and President John Henry Smith, second counselor on the right. This is Elder John Smith, patriarch to the church at that time. On his death, which occurred in 1911, his 33-year-old grandson, Elder Hiram G. Smith, a 70 in the church, was ordained a high priest and called the following year to be patriarch in his stead. This office was held and faithfully administered in until Patriarch Hiram G. Smith died in 1932 at the comparatively early age of 53 years. The First Presidency under Joseph F. Smith, together with the Quorum of the Twelve and the Presiding Patriarch, are seen here on the steps of the temple. In the second row, reading from left to right, can be seen Elders Reed Smoot, George F. Richards, David O. McKay, all wearing derby hats, George Albert Smith, Heber J. Grant, and others ranged behind them. Another group, apparently dressed for an automobile excursion, is gathered round President Smith on the steps of the church office building. This group includes members of President Smith's family and close friends. President Smith was very fond of riding in an automobile and would take frequent short drives whenever his many duties would allow. President Smith's second counselor, President John Henry Smith, passed away in the fall of 1911, and Elder Charles W. Penrose was chosen to succeed him. The First Presidency is seen here as they leave the temple, followed by Elders Heber J. Grant, Rudger Clausen, Hiram Max Smith, with George Albert Smith on the outside, Orson F. Whitney, Joseph Fielding Smith, Anthony W. Ivins, with James E. Talmage on the outside, Patriarch Hiram G. Smith and Stephen L. Richards, all members of the general authorities of the church. President Joseph F. Smith served the church as his presiding officer for 17 eventful and progressive years. The son of Hiram Smith, brother to the prophet Joseph, President Smith was born at far west Missouri. As a boy of nine years of age, he helped to drive an ox team across the plains to enter the valley of the Great Salt Lake in 1848. He fulfilled missions to both the Hawaiian Islands and Great Britain and was one of the general authorities for 52 years, being ordained an apostle in 1866. His kindly features speak eloquently of the love he bore his fellow men, and that love was reciprocated in full measure by all who knew him. Elder Anthony H. Lund was a member of the First Presidency for the duration of President Joseph F. Smith's administration, serving as second counselor for the first nine years, and then as first counselor on the death of President John R. Winder in 1910. President Lund was a native of Denmark, being born at Oldberg in 1844. He accepted the gospel on his 12th birthday, and by the time he was 16 years of age, was president of five branches of the church. In 1862, he emigrated to Zion, where his continued faithful and wholehearted activity in the church brought him apostleship in 1889 under the hands of Elder George Q. Cannon. Elder Charles W. Penrose was born at London, England in 1832, joining the church there in 1850. After a missionary labor of 10 years duration in his native country, he emigrated to Zion in 1861. In between several subsequent missions, his capable and pungent writings led him into a journalistic career. The hymns of Zion record ample evidence of the poetic ability of Elder Penrose. He was a man of a highly sensitive and sanguine temperament, quick to think, speak, and act. Ordained an apostle in 1904, he was a stalwart member and a fitting counselor in the first presidency of the church. Elder Hiram Max Smith, eldest son of President Joseph F. Smith, was called into the Quorum of the Twelve in 1901. A dynamic personality, he died in 1918 at the early age of 46 years. Elder Heber J. Grant, a man of unshakable faith and determination, was a businessman and genius at organization. Having been made a member of the Twelve Apostles at the early age of 26, he became president of that council in 1916 at the death of Elder Francis M. Lyman. Four days after the death of President Joseph F. Smith in 1918, Elder Heber J. Grant became president of the church, choosing as his counselors the same two men who had so faithfully served the former president, President Anthony H. Lund and Charles W. Penrose. Prior to this time, President Grant had held positions of a state president at the early age of 24, filled a mission to Japan, and risen from the humble beginnings of a messenger boy in an insurance office to be president of a bank. 
President Grant served in the legislature and on the city council and was head of the European mission from 1904 to 1906. His business connections brought him in contact with many influential people. When opportunity occurred, he never failed to bear a strong and faithful testimony to the divine mission of Jesus Christ and the restoration of his church in these latter days. President Grant's father died in Salt Lake City in 1856. And as the only child of his mother, the boy grew up with a deep sense of responsibility in the home. These three men then constituted the first presidency until the spring of 1921, when President Lund was taken to his eternal rest. Elder Anthony W. Ivins, a member of the Council of the Twelve since 1907, was chosen by President Grant to be the new second counselor in the first presidency. President Penrose having been advanced to the position of first counselor. Brother Ivins came to this position with much experience behind him, particularly in the field of missionary endeavor, where he had spent many years among the Mexican people and the Indians of southern Utah and Arizona. A great lover of horses, he was a successful farmer and stockman. We now see the first presidency and members of the Quorum of the Twelve leaving the temple after one of their regular Thursday meetings. Leading the group is President Grant in the center, with President Penrose holding on to his right arm. At the time this picture was taken, President Penrose was approaching, or had just passed, his 90th birthday, and this is the last motion picture record of him. On President Grant's left is President Ivins. Next in line, the tall figure of Elder Reed Smoot, accompanied by Elder Rudger Clausen. Then Elders George Albert Smith and George F. Richards. David O. McKay follows with Joseph Fielding Smith. Just a glimpse of Stephen L. Richards walking with James E. Talmadge, and then Patriarch Hiram G. Smith with Richard R. Lyman. The last two elders are Melvin J. Ballard and John A. Widso. Orson F. Whitney, the only apostle missing from the preceding group, is seen here on the steps of the temple. Prior to his call into the Quorum of the Twelve, Bishop Whitney, as he was affectionately known to all, resided over the 18th Ward for over 28 years, and for five years had served in the capacity of assistant church historian. From his talented pen have come numerous major literary works, histories, biographies, and essays, and he ranks as one of Utah's leading poets and lyric writers. Experiences gained on his first mission in 1876 provided him with a firm testimony of the gospel. And from that time forward, everything he set his hand to must first conform to the gospel plan. Bishop Whitney was a successful journalist, having spent many years with the Deseret News editorial staff. He was an accomplished speaker and had a grand sense of humor, probably bequeathed from his younger days when he was vitally interested in the theater as a career. Elder David O. McKay, an apostle of the church since 1906, has been a Sunday school man all his life. Starting with the secretaryship of his home ward at Huntsville, he rose to fill all three positions in succession in the superintendency of the Deseret Sunday School Union and has been a member of the first presidency since 1934, acting as second counselor to both President Grant and President George Albert Smith. Elder Joseph Fielding Smith, another son of President Joseph S. Smith, has been associated with the Quorum of the Twelve since 1910. Elder Smith has always been greatly interested in the history of the church and genealogical work. His first mission took him to England in 1899, where he labored for two years. Elder Smith has written a number of doctrinal and historical works, and now in 1948, fills the office of church historian and recorder, and is president of the Utah Genealogical Society and the Salt Lake Temple. Elder Stephen L. Richards was called to preside with the Twelve Apostles in 1970. Like Brother McKay, much of Brother Richards' time has been spent in the service of the Sunday School. An extensive education, Unusual ability in his chosen profession of civil law, coupled with wide connections and business pursuits, have given him a wisdom and poise among men which lends added weight to his oft-repeated abiding and unimpeachable testimony of the divine mission of Jesus Christ. Elder Reed Smoot's membership in the Quorum of the Twelve dates back to 1900. In his younger days, Brother Smoot was particularly interested in a business career, being associated at that time with the Provo Woolen Mill. He was called on a mission to England in 1890, and this experience awakened a spiritual development which he never allowed to be submerged by temporal ambition. In 1895, he became a member of the Utah State Presidency, in which office he continued until he was called to apostleship in 1900. He succeeded in being elected to the United States Senate in 1903, but an attempt was made to prevent him taking office because of the bitterness shown toward the Mormon people in some quarters. In 1907, this opposition was finally overcome. 
Senator Smoot retained his seat until 1932, representing the people of Utah in the U.S. Senate for some 30 years. Elder George Albert Smith was born in Salt Lake City in 1870 and served in the Southern States Mission from 1892 to 94. He was associated with the ZCMI clothing factory in his younger days and later became receiver of the United States Land Office. He has always been active in the church, especially in Ward MIA and Sunday School work. Elder Smith was chosen to fill a vacancy in the Quorum of the Twelve in 1903 when he was 33 years of age. Averaging some 30,000 miles a year, one and a half meetings a day, he threw himself into the work of the ministry with such vigor that his health began to fail, necessitating a temporary rest to regain strength. An ardent supporter of the Boy Scout movement, and with a remarkable faculty for making friends, Elder George Albert Smith, now president of the church in 1948, has always practiced the two great commandments, the love of God and the love of one's fellow men. Born in faraway Norway, Elder John A. Widso emigrated to the United States with his mother and youngest brother in 1884 and has since become one of Utah's foremost authors and educators. A keen desire for knowledge took him to Harvard and universities in Europe, culminating in an appointment as president of the Utah State Agricultural College and later the University of Utah. Elder Widso was made an apostle in 1921 and acted as president of the European Mission from 1927 to 1933. Another much-loved apostle was Elder Melvin J. Ballard. Prior to his call to be numbered among the presiding brethren in 1919, Brother Ballard had served as a missionary for 12 years, 10 of these years being spent as president of the Northwestern States Mission. Elder Ballard was a musician of considerable ability, and immediately after graduating from Brigham Young College in 1894, joined the faculty and taught music there for two years. He was also very active in stake MIA and Sunday school work on the ward level. A name that will be readily recalled is James E. Talmage, one of the church's most eminent scientists and educators. Born in England in 1862, his family emigrated to Utah when he was a boy of 14, settling at Provo. His early schooling in the old country fitted him for advanced studies at Brigham Young Academy. From there, he attended a selected course in chemistry and geology at Lehigh University in Pennsylvania, passing all exams of a normal four-year course in one year. Further studies in the East fitted him for a professorship in geology and chemistry at the Brigham Young University and later the University of Utah. He was president of the LDS College, traveled extensively and gathered numerous degrees and distinctions in his scientific pursuits. Elder Talmage was ordained an apostle in 1911 and was president of the British Mission from 1924 to 27. Professionally a scientist and preceptor, Dr. Talmage was also a speaker of great ability and skill an absolute master of English in both pen and tongue. Elder Rudger Clausen was a notable figure among the general authorities of the church, having been called to the apostleship in 1898. Born in Salt Lake City in the year 1857, Brother Clausen went through a normal school life and at the age of 18 became secretary to John W. Young, president of the Utah Western Railway Company. During his mission to the southern states in 1879, he was involved in a terrible incident when his companion, Joseph Standing, was shot and killed by a mob. For a while, his own life also hung in the balance, while the mobbers deliberated as to his fate. On his returning to Utah, and having obeyed the law of thorough marriage, Elder Clausen was one of the first to suffer persecution under the Edmonds Law. Although only 27 years of age, he was sentenced to four years in the Utah Penitentiary and a fine of $800. When asked why judgment should not be pronounced, he replied, Your Honor, I very much regret that the laws of my country should come in conflict with the laws of my God. But when they do, I shall invariably choose the latter. In answer to a query made in later life, what has been the most potent factor in aiding you to success? Elder Clausen replied, My success in life, if I have attained any, is due to a fixed and unyielding determination to seek and abide by counsel and he who turns therefrom and seeks to become a law unto himself must surely fall. Elder Clausen was senior member of the Quorum of the Twelve for 25 years and is seen here presiding over that quorum. On his right and to the left of the picture, starting at the head of the table, can be seen elders Reed Smoot, George Albert Smith, George F. Richards, David O. McKay, and Joseph Fielding Smith. On his left and to the right of the picture, also starting at the head of the table, are elders John A. Whitso, Melvin J. Ballard, Richard R. Lyman, Stephen L. Richards, and James E. Talmadge.
When President Charles W. Penrose, first counselor to President Grant, died in 1925, President Ivins was advanced from second to first counselor, and Bishop Charles W. Nibley, who had previously acted as presiding bishop to the church since 1907, was brought into the first presidency as second counselor. Here we see President Grant with his counselors, President Ivins on his right, and President Nibley on his left. Brother Nibley was born near Edinburgh, Scotland, the family emigrating to America in 1855, where they were among the first settlers to make their home in Cache Valley. Elder Nibley filled two missions for the church. The first in 1869 was a short-term mission in the United States, the other in 1877 taking him to England. Prominent in business, church, and social life, Brother Nibley was superintendent of the Cash Stake Sunday Schools for many years. He was at various times engaged in the lumber, sugar, and railroading industries, and brought a wealth of experience to his 18-year term of office as presiding bishop, and the subsequent six and a half years that he was a member of the First Presidency. Coming down the steps of the Church Office Administration Building, we now see the seven presidents of the First Council of Seventy. In the lead, with a coat over his arm, is President Brigham H. Roberts, one of the most voluminous writers in the church. His works are historical, biographical, and doctrinal. From left to right, we see Presidents Seymour B. Young, Joseph W. McMurrin, B. H. Roberts, Charles H. Hart, Rulon S. Wells, J. Golden Kimball, and Levi Edgar Young. Senior President Seymour B. Young was born in Kirtland, Ohio in 1837 and went through all the troublous days of the church, starting with the massacre at Hans Mill, where his mother carried him to safety through a hail of bullets. The Young family arrived in the valley in 1850, and later was among those who settled in Cache Valley. Elder Young filled a mission to England in 1857 and 58, and again in 1870. He studied medicine, and later became personal physician to Brigham Young. Elder Young was set apart as one of the first presidents of 70 in 1882. President Levi Edgar Young, son of senior President Seymour B. Young, came into the First Council in 1909. Brother Young has been associated with advanced learning all his mature life, being identified with educational work in district and church schools, and later as an instructor at both the LDS College and the University of Utah. He served four years on a mission in Europe, two of which he presided over the Swiss-Austrian mission, and more recently in the United States as president of the New England mission. Having attended both Harvard and Columbia universities, President Young holds an M.A. and a doctor's degree in philosophy. President Ray L. Pratt, another of the first presidents of 70, was born in Salt Lake City in 1878. Nine years later, he accompanied his parents to Juarez in Mexico, where he learned Spanish from the natives. Brother Pratt was called to preside over the Mexican mission in 1907 and continued in that office for 24 years until his untimely death in 1931 at the comparatively early age of 53. Elder Pratt was sustained as one of the first presidents of 70 in 1925. President Joseph William McMurrin was numbered among the first council of 70 in 1897 when he was 39 years of age. Brother McMurrin was a staunch missionary, starting at the early age of 17 when he was called on a colonizing mission to Arizona. His first foreign mission was in England, where in 25 months he baptized 50 people. A second and yet a third mission to Great Britain occupied another six years. A true 70, he died in missionary harness while presiding over the California mission in 1932. Another member of the First Council of 70 was President Charles H. Hart, entering that quorum in 1906. Brother Hart was a lawyer by profession, practicing first in Paris, Idaho, and later at Logan, Utah. He was elected judge of the first judicial district of the state of Utah and served on the bench for nine years. He took a keen interest in MIA activities and was a Sunday school superintendent and teacher. He became a member of the general board of both the Young Men's Mutual Improvement Association and the Deseret Sunday School Union. President J. Golden Kimball was also one of the first presidents of 70, and his name has become legendary among the forthright speakers of the church. Brother Kimball was a son of Heber C. Kimball, and upon the death of his father in 1868, the younger Kimball entered into the rough life of cattle raising, and his church activities suffered in consequence. To Carl G. Mazur, that great educator of early Utah, is attributed the influence which motivated Brother Kimball to great spiritual activity, activity which brought with it membership among the general authorities of the church. 